In this lecture, we will create a hierarchy and layout of UI components to build a main menu screen, which will contain a background, a logo and three buttons. To achieve this, we have to take into consideration different properties of the buttons and the panel that the buttons will belong to. Because this is an introductory course about the new UI toolkit for runtime, I will not go too deep into the details of how to create different layouts or describing all the properties that we can use to achieve different effects of positioning UI elements on the screen. Probably as this course evolves, I will add more lectures focused only on positioning UI elements. For now, just remember that the layouts in new UI toolkit are created using a Flexbox system. If you would like to learn more about positioning UI elements using both their position and size, as well as the Flexbox layout system to create lists of elements, you can study the resources listed in that section. Positioning, size and layout of UI elements can seem difficult at first, but it's pretty straightforward once you grasp the basics of how it's all connected and related to each other. The beauty of using CSS for UI is that we can create very complex and generic UI layouts where the sizes of UI objects depend on each other as well as on the resolution of the final screen. We created a style of the bottom, but we can change it a bit so that it looks even better. Let's start by increasing the font size of a text property to 20. And let's also change the color to plain white. We can also change the horizontal alignment to center and vertical alignment to middle so that the text is right in the center of a button. Now let's save these changes. And now we can move on to creating our main menu screen. So let's start it by defining a screen style that is going to be a background for all other screens. So let's create a new visual element. Let's put it at the top of the hierarchy. And let's call it main menu screen. And now we can change the properties of this component. So let's set the flex grow property to one. So it's gonna fill whole available space. And because button is gonna be one of the uh, children of this object, so main menu screen is always gonna be filling whole available space, just like it is now. Next, we set the alignment of items to center. so that whatever is a child of this visual element, it's gonna be right in the middle. And it's all gonna make sense later on when we actually create the rest of the components. And now we can save this inline style to a class called screen. So let's type in the screen class and let's click extract inline styles to a new class. The screen now appeared in our list of styles. And we can move on to adjusting and assigning background texture. So next we change the background image texture to background. This is the graphic that we previously imported in the graphics folder. The scale mode should be set to scale and crop so that it nicely fills all the available space no matter what the resolution of the actual viewport is. Now we can save these recent changes to class called screen background and we can extract the style.
So you can now see that when we change the size of the UI window, the background scales together with it and it always fills it evenly. It's important to create such universal and generic interfaces because when we want our application to run on different devices, it's hard to predict the size of all of them. Now we can save the recent changes. Okay. Now we can move on and uh, for now let's delete a button that we've previously created as we won't be using it for now. And now create a new visual element inside the previous main menu screen. And call it menu center panel. We can change its align items property to center. And let's also set justified content to center. In the size section, the width should be set to 50% and height to 100%. So that the panel containing the menu buttons and the title logo will be placed in the middle but occupying the space from top to bottom. Let's now extract these properties to a menu center panel class. We also have to create a class for a background of the center panel so let's change the background to a black color and set the opacity to 100. And now we can save this style to menu background color class. And as you can see, we have a nice dark transparent panel right in the middle of a screen and depending on the resolution of the final device or a screen it's always going to be evenly placed at the center. Now we're going to place our main logo. So let's start by creating a new visual element inside the menu center panel. Name it menu start title and change its size so that uh, the width is set to 100% and height to 35%. Also the minimum height should be set to 150 pixels. so that when the UI canvas scales down, the logo will still remain visible. A graphic for the logo should be stored in a graphics folder as a logo.png. And the scale mode should be set to scale to fit. We can also collapse other properties so that it's easy for us to see what we've just changed. We will not save the style to the class. It's going to remain as an inline style because we will only have one object with a logo texture assigned to it. However, remember, when you plan to use a particular UI object more than once, you should always try and export its properties to a new class. So that when you make some changes, they're going to be consistent throughout all the objects. We can also save the recent changes. 
please remember that it's important to save changes often, especially in the beta version of both the Unity and the UI Builder that we're now using. Because whenever something wrong happens, like for example an unexpected crash, we won't lose our work. Moreover, it's worth considering using a system version control because even when we save the changes, when there are some serialization problems with the, for example, a UI builder that happened also to me, we can easily lose some of our work and we will have to repeat some of the steps. So it's important to back up the changes using, for example, a source tree or a, a git SVN. Now below our logo, uh, we create another visual element called menu buttons list. And let's change the align items property to center and justify content to flex start. Also, if we want to override the default state of particular property, so for example, the default state of justified content is flex start, but we would like to make sure that it always is flex start, no matter, for example, what the settings of a parent are, then we gotta change it to any other state and then go back to flex start. Then the width should be set to 50% and minimum width to 200 pixels. And let's also export it to menu balance list class. Now we are almost done with creating main menu screen. Last thing is to add three buttons named start, settings and exit. Then we will have complete functionality of our first menu screen. So now create a new button inside the menu buttons list and assign a button class to it. But we want buttons in the menu to look slightly differently because its size is mostly going to be controlled by the menu buttons list. We have to give it more freedom by changing a width to 100%. and a height to 100 pixels. Let's also change the top and bottom margins to 10 pixels. And finally, the font size can be set to 40. Now save the recently created style to menu button class. Let's now duplicate the first button two times. We can also make the canvas slightly bigger so that it's easier for us to see how it's gonna look later on. And we can now name them accordingly. So the start button will be called start button and the text should display start. The second button will be settings button. Text should be settings. And finally exit button 
with a text set to X. We can also change the hierarchy display mode so that we can see the type of the element in the list. Okay. So this is a complete main menu screen. Later on, we will add functionality so that when we press start or settings button, we're going to be moved to another screen. But for now, we can click the preview and check how it's gonna look during runtime. Everything works, so we can save it and move on to the next lecture. To sum up this lecture, you have learned how to create a hierarchy and layout of UI components. Then, by organizing a background, a logo and three buttons, we build a main menu screen.